Greetings, I'm back. Um, still with the, the shoddy setup, but um, bear with me. Um, yeah, so welcome back to, uh, I'm calling this the, the rising doula corner. Um, I use the word rising instead of morning because I am not in morning. Every day I awake ready to ascend, to celebrate, and to rise. So welcome to uh, this rising doula chat. It's feeling good to do it. Uh, this would be weekly now. I did a post last week just sort of talking about the necessity of a doula, a trained doula, talking with people about um, the birth culture, this, the, uh, the sacredness of birth, and how it impacts humanity. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the like a brief history of the birth climate that we're in right now. Um, I had to learn a little bit um, more than what I already knew to get my timeline straight. And so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to share that with you. I think it's important to have a knowledge of the history of birth so that we know um, moving forward, you know, the kinds of decisions or the reasons why we birth the way we do and the, the context because they're quite outdated and we are entering into a new cycle and we need to choose, pick and choose what to bring with us. And a lot of these things, I don't know, whatever, we have to make our own decisions <laughs> as birthing individuals, uh, beings. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to do a, a, a brief obstetric history. Um, and then in the future, uh, on a weekly basis or however often I do it, I will start a, um, a chat room on uh, Clubhouse and then also simultaneously do a live on YouTube. So I'll have the pre-recorded posted here on Instagram, on YouTube, and then we'll do a live discussion um, where people can come and just sort of talk to me about the, the topic because I want to build up those two platforms for discussing um, where we want to go with birth okay so welcome back uh if you weren't here last time i'm zuri the dreamer i'm a doula of 13 years um and uh, i've seen a lot and i have a little bit of perspective on um on birth and uh, i'm here to share it with you discuss with you uh lend my wisdom learn from you uh and um yeah, I'm happy to be here. All right, so brief history of, obst of obstetrics. Uh, basically, we were giving birth naturally because we didn't have any other choice. Um, you know, it was sort of a part of the milieu of life. Uh, it, it, let's see, it was really dictated by um, access to good nutrition as well as... Um, physical activity so the very poor the very poor might have lacked access to the the nutrition uh, that they needed to maintain a healthy pregnancy but they had plenty of physical exercise so the mechanics of birthing opening the hips moving and all that kind of stuff favored the people who worked in fields over say the very rich who just sat in chairs all day um, barely got any sun, any movement, and they were having more mechanical difficulties with getting the baby out of them. So there was a lot of stigma around birth in general. Um, it's safety, you know, a lot of women, really wealthy women died in childbirth, which gave it the, uh, the culture of fear. And of course, women's bodies and women's sexuality up until now has been very taboo and so there uh, you know we've been heavily burdened by superstition as women and as a society um, around women's sexuality sex birth and uh, you know anything that is part of the course or comes from it <laughs> um, yeah so it was an everyday occurrence normal natural um, in 1846 the first physician, uh, it was the first time that, I mean, we had, um, let's see, uh, wealthy women, I believe uh, Queen Elizabeth is the first one to have, um, you know, to have been sort of chloroformed or, or taken away from her birth experience 
uh, in order to um, get away from the pain of it. And it became sort of a hallmark of being extremely wealthy to have uh, pain medication or pretty sure that's where I remember. <laughs> but in 1846, the, uh, the modern uh, analgesics or uh, anesthesia that we use for surgery today was um, applied to birth um, in, uh, I think, Edinburgh. Um, but yeah, and it was, it was, you know, in terms of modern medicine, it actually had mixed reviews. A lot of physicians at the time attributed pain and uh, the consciousness of a woman to the ability to create contractions. So without, they thought that, you know, if you didn't have pain, then you couldn't have the necessary uh, power to contract the baby out. So it was actually pretty mixed reviews. Um, and really for another half a century, women remained birthing at home. It wasn't uh, that in vogue to, uh, to birth, you know, without a midwife, um, unless you had major yeah, you know, people birthed at home unless they had major issues. Uh, but what did happen, what kind of changed the tide was a year after the first uh, application of anesthesia in birth, uh, the famous, um, I should say this is the history of birth in the U.S. or the Western world, uh, but the, the suffragette movement, Elizabeth Cady Stanton in New York, uh, that whole um, campaign for women's rights started to shift attitudes about the way women birth. Um, you know, it was generally understood up until that time that, you know, it was women's work, it was natural, it was, you know, all these religious uh, stigmas uh, that women birth naturally with pain. And the suffragettes, uh, or, you know, that feminist movement was determined uh, to improve a woman's health. And they attributed multiple pregnancies, which I call uh, patriarchal animal husbandry <laughs> of the time, uh, as not good or conducive to a woman's health, both mentally and physically. So, um, you know, they were advocating uh, birth control, they were advocating health education, um, and there was a general attitude that, or understanding um, of the time that pain, even childbirth pain, was cumulative, uh, had, had, excuse me, had negative cumulative effects on the body. So, you know, for someone to have natural childbirth over and over and over and over again was supposedly an inhumane thing to do to a woman because it just continued to deteriorate her health over the course of her lifetime. So they really pushed for the medicalization of birth as uh, a symbol or a means for improving women's lives and longevity. Um, so they really pushed for an increase in obstetricians, trained obstetricians, uh, a decrease in what was called um, granny midwives, which were mo mostly, um, especially in the South, slaves that had come from uh, West Africa, um, also, you know, indigenous uh, women. Uh, their wisdom, their birth wisdom, was was considered unclean. Um, it was considered a hallmark of being poor and under oppression. And so, the this feminist movement really pushed for more obstetricians and uh, and uh, you know for women to have long postpartum stays at the hospital um, and all of that kind of stuff as a mar as a means to advancement. And um, yeah, so by the, I think it was 50% uh, uh, of births were attended by midwives up until, uh, yeah, 1900. But by 1913, they were only attending about 15% of births. So in that time, the whole culture around trusting women's bodies, trusting nature, uh, trusting pain, um, descended into a radical medicalization of the birth process. and the stigmatization, stigmatization against midwifery uh, as being unclean and unsafe. Uh, there was a, a guy, uh, uh, gosh, there was a term written here called uh, pregnancy being a tumor of the belly. <laughs> so uh, it, it went from being a natural part of life occurrence, part of the life cycle, a beautiful part of our creation you know, to being uh, 
considered a sickness and illness. And so uh, policies, hospital policies um, that managed like the small percentage of women who had uh, major complications, the way they were, uh, their care was managed was applied to every woman that was birthing, regardless of their health. So uh, even if you were a healthy woman, you still had a tumor of the belly, you still had an illness, an affliction, a painful affliction uh, happening to you that needed to be managed by the professional field. And women were sold to each other, selling to each other, that handing over our care to the male physician was a sign of improvement uh, for our health care. So, yeah, that is a huge paradigm, a major uh, shift in the trust in women's bodies and what they do naturally uh, into putting it into the care of an external solution, an external management. Like, uh, and that's wild to me.